From the campus studios of Sarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hello, and welcome to another Ropecast. Hello, Peter. Hello, Roger. Peter, I recently said a few words about how people get elected to the House of Commons, and I was thinking... I don't really know very much about the U.S. equivalent. I know there's Congress, I know there's the Mm -hmm. Senate, there's a House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. Right. But uh, there are different systems for electing to these chambers too, right? Well, uh, first maybe let me make a grammar remark. Congress does not take an article. Uh You talk about going to Congress or being elected to Congress. Whereas you say the United States Congress, (laughs) interestingly enough. But seriously, Congress is composed of two chambers, meaning one being the Senate and one being the House of Representatives. The Senate is a chamber of 100 seats exactly. There's two seats for each state of the United States. So if the United States grows, as it has done several times in its history, the Senate right. also grows in size. Right. For example, if Puerto Rico were to become the 51st state of the United States, that would make the number grow to 102. Yeah. And what's interesting is these senators, two senators for each state, are elected for six years, but not all at the same time. Ah, yes. So one third is re-elected every two years. So you have a change in majorities and everything every two years, yes. usually, because one third of the senators is re-elected. So there's quite a lot of continuity yes. compared with the House of Commons where nobody knows what's going to happen after the next election. Right. Continuity on the one hand, continuous change, but only to a small extent on the other. Yeah. That is different for the House of Representatives. Mm-hmm. The House of Representatives has 435 members, representatives, as they're called, and they are elected for only two-year terms. So they only get to stay two years. And the big difference, of course, is while in the Senate you have two people for every state, no matter how big or how small it is, the number of representatives for each state in the House of Representatives depends on how many people live in that state. Right. However, it can never get below one. You Mm. at least (laughs) have to have one. I don't know if there's a state that only has one, but Alaska, for example, doesn't have much more. I think the largest number of representatives comes from California. So they're only elected for two years. This is a huge numerical difference. In the UK, 60 million people, not voters, but people in total, Mm -hmm. and there are over 600 members of the House of Commons. Right. And you're saying in the United States, 400 and some. For how many million Americans? 250 about (laughs) the last count. So that is, uh, yeah, I know. But on the other hand, you'd have to consider that Americans elect a lot of other things as well. Yeah. This goes all the way down to judges who are elected Mm. by the people. So I guess they don't want too many elections on their Mm. hands all the time. One other thing is maybe that's interesting and that is stronger than maybe in the UK is the system of checks and balances, the relationship between the both houses of Congress, the president and the Supreme Court. So you have the executive, the legislature and the judiciary. Right. I think these are kept much more separate in the United States. These are very, very much separate. So the president, we said that in another podcast, is elected by popular vote. Okay, he is there. Then you have those two houses of Congress. And they sort of, that's what's meant by checks and balances. They control each other. So let's, for example, say a most important thing. Say Senate and the House pass a law. Okay, they, they, they vote on the law and say, okay, this is going to be a law, the new health bill, let's yeah. say. Okay, a bill is a law that has not really become a law yet. <laughs> it's a bill. And then this bill goes to the president, and now he can say, no, mm. I don't want this. This is called a veto. Yeah. But then, and this is the sort of mutual check on each other that they have, then if the Senate and the House of Representatives can vote on this again with a majority of two-thirds, then this veto of the president is overruled. Ah, yes. So then, you know, if 
the president has a big say in this. Mm. But if the United States Congress feels, well, the president was wrong here, and we all agree on that, they can say, okay, forget it, man. <laughs> this is going to become a law. Yep. Okay. I hope that wasn't too complicated, folks. Tune in again for another episode of Ropecast very soon on your iPod. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial. <laughs>